<laughs> you fools! You'll never defeat me. Now face the wrath. Why is he so hot? What? I think it's just that epic miniature. It's really doing a lot for me, too. Yeah, maybe. But he's also kinda... Silence! <clears throat> As I was saying, face the wrath of my metal army, crafted here in my Eldritch Foundry. Dude, where'd you get all these minis? <sighs> I'm subscribed to Eldritch Foundry's Eldritch Unlimited with unlimited STL downloads. Now, can we get back to- Eldritch Foundry's amazing. I never thought I'd have the perfect mini for my demon-born, half-elemental, cat-folk, warlock, bard, multi-class with a bunny wizard familiar, but here she is. Thank you so much for printing her. Uh, yeah. Sure, Jen. No problem. Now face my wrath! Good evening and welcome back. This is Band of Badges, and of course, because I'm in the chair, we're playing Pathfinder. Uh, yeah. It is Abomination Vaults, um, so welcome to uh, well level three, I guess, because uh, we finished level two last time we played two weeks ago. So we are now on level three. Players will be facing even tougher challenges because you've all got to fourth level. We don't. It don't have to be tougher, Steve. Well, that is true. They don't have been pretty to be, deadly I, I have as they are at the moment. It's <laughs> yeah, judging from what I saw from last week's episode, the creatures are definitely going to get more. Um, <laughs> is there a nice PG way for I to describe what you guys showed me? Because it was horror. It but... was horrifying. It was horrible. I don't ever want to like that. Pi Paizo, Paizo, why? I implore you, Paizo. Why? This is like there, there's Eldritch a secret department horror. in Pezo that, that just like takes the weird and then makes it weirder. It's like they pass it down. There must be like office like cubicles. Right. Oh yeah, I come up. Um, it, it oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm picturing cute. it actually gets physically passed down and they all yeah. sit in the basement. Yeah. And then like, <laughs> yeah. it, it get like the lights get darker as they yeah. start to get more and more twisted. Yeah. There's torch light and candles by the time it gets they, down. So they have less color pencils. Yeah. It's it's I'm. Glad I wasn't here to get licked by the weird bezel bub <laughs> creature. <laughs> Belongs in a bad fever dream. It, yeah. it, it was it was horrible. Yeah, yeah. That because the problem was because because of that whole licking thing was going on. He was licking the walls first and kept doing it while we're trying to have a conversation with him, and then he licked someone's hand. But the picture had this long, thin tongue. But that's not what I pictured. I had this like cow tongue. This massive, like, <laughs> ultra-wide. Uh, yeah, that was nasty. Well, glad I missed it. Can't wait to see what's in store for today. Well, we, we will find out shortly. We'll find out shortly. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, we will continue shortly. Uh, it is September in real time here in the UK at the moment. So that's 2024. Means all, 2024. All the children have gone back to school. And, of course... Christmas is now on the shelves in the supermarkets. I have had my first mince pie of the year two days ago. Oh. Um, it so was cold there today. Go. There was frost on the cars. It's September. <laughs> it's wow. September. Wow. frost on the cars. Wow. <laughs> yes. We it's had two be, weeks of sun. It's going to be 100 degrees Fahrenheit on Sunday where I live. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. It's in the, it's in the 80s here. No, it's definitely it's definitely turned. It's, uh, it's jumpers heating heating on, oh. and uh, yeah, it was it was cold today. It was cold today. Um, so uh, I guess any news? Anyone got any news? Yeah. Oh, my gaming room. I just spent three days decorating my new gaming room, and I've I've never I've never done matte white. On so many different areas just as a base coat and it, it was like two coats i did the mist because it was fresh plaster then i did two coats that wasn't enough so i've done another coat three days i've spent in that bloody room and and i'm still like nitpicking and trying to tidy it up i was like why it's paint stay on the walls and it won't but was it coming off 
it's not it's not coming off i've done a really you, good you're job. just seeing the plaster but through I can, I can see bits so today i finally uh just before we came on actually uh finally folded up all the dust sheets i'm, I'm happy with i got to, and now i've got to steam the floors because they're wood floors i've got i got to do all that now i've got to put the stuff in buy new furniture for it wow upgrade <sighs> massive upgrade yeah expensive nice. upgrade but better than what we had before so i'm happy they need to take money well spent nice. i'll have to have a chat with uh, mike i think because oh. his, his tables are gorgeous so yes you, you need you need a table in there definitely yeah and mike isn't here because he's he's delivering the massive one i believe this Ooh. today or this weekend wow and this is what nine foot long by six foot is that right yeah and yeah. he's put it on Instagram today. So go over to the Weather Dragon on Instagram and you'll see this massive table. But it is utterly gorgeous. He's, he's, he's removed the leather and he's put dragon skin uh, inlay. Not want... just in the in the table area. I in want the that player's table. area. Yeah. Oh, it's gorgeous. Wow. Amazingly gorgeous. Oh my gosh. And that is too big for my gaming room. So. I need something, small, need something smaller. <laughs> I'll, t I'll take That's the one funny. with all the signatures on it. Yeah. Then we gotta put That's, that's a big table it. anyway. It is, yeah. Um, right, sponsors, Dave. <gasps> am, I, am I still on? Okay, go on in. Right, um, as you may know, you can see there's some logos on the bottom left-hand side there. They are, of course, Beetle and Grimm's, which don't just give us everything. They also give us these little things. Look. This is the Character Chronicles, and these are some dice. That was well, a tin of dice, um, but they, we do loads of bits and pieces uh, with them. And also, if you're a fan of board games and Beetle and Grimm's, um, it's out as of now, the Ring of Chaos, the regular edition and the uh, limited edition, the platinum edition, I think they, they call it. And in the uh, rule book, the pamphlet that's inside, you go straight to the back page, you look down where it says play testers and it says band of fucking badgers, baby. Yes. <laughs> just, just without the fucking in it. Yeah. And and without the baby as well. It is not baby band of badgers. It is the band of badgers uh, as play testers. So yet another one um, for 2020. I mean, we. I need to tally these up. We've actually done, in terms of play testing this year, I think is the most we've done. Uh, we yeah, might even be into double digits this year. And this year is not, we've, got, we've still got quarter four to go. And we have stuff booked in, so we're doing really well. Um, so yeah, that's cool. Uh, so there's there's the books, there's the character chronicles, there's the dice. Um, Steve will throw up the the dot com, uh, but also thank you to Pezo because that's what we're playing. Abomination Vaults. Steve, how are you finding Abomination Vaults? Uh, I'm enjoying running it. It's uh, I'm not enjoying trying to find this button, <laughs> which I'm still looking for. Still uh, there you go. <laughs> Get right, let's do that job. Get that job out of the way. I'm do we've we've changed topics. Yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, I'm really enjoying the adventure. It has some uh, some unexpected turns. Uh, I really liked the zibub and the, and the spider thing last week. That was that was quite fun. Uh, For you, maybe. Not there, yeah. <laughs> um, and and Put it is an you, adventure. Steve. It is an adventure that you can play on different aspects. So we're sort of playing on the more fear-based aspect, but you could you could run it as a, a standard dungeon crawl and it'd be just as fun. But exactly that. So uh, Phil, who's on the other side of Steve, um, he's also a GM or the always GM, forever GM. Yep. And you've played this with your with your current group at the moment. You're ahead of where we are. Just you a little touch. Bit. Exactly, you got in touch because you saw us on YouTube. You wanted to come and play, and we always say if you want to come and play, just get in touch, and we'll put you on the screen. We've got guest spots, permanent spots, whatever you want to do. All you got to do is, is time it right, and then we can put you in. But how how do you find Abomination Vaults? What's your GM point of view on this one? Uh, I agree. So I so my players got interested because you know it was a mega dungeon. That's kind of how we started. Yeah. But then the more I read, I really, I really like the horror aspects, and I keep trying to lean harder into the horror aspects. So. Nice, yeah, nice, nice. It is is um, is a good story from that aspect, definitely. Now, I, I like the way they've got both aspects there. 
And also, you'll see another another sponsor down at Eldritch Foundry. If you was here at the beginning, you would have seen the trailer. Uh, you can get 10% off your order right now. I believe the code's stank because in August, they were doing 30% off and I managed to get 40% off something I was buying. Uh, but you can use Badger code uh, Badger24. There you go. Um, we're down to the last few months. It's September. You've got to go quick if you want more. And uh, currently, it's a Kickstarter run uh, for coloured colour. Yeah, colour printing. Yeah, colour printing is now going to be a thing. Oh, you know what? I should get something. Sorry, everyone's going to see uh, a little a little behind, but I uh, want to thank Richard for printing her out again. I really need to get my lighting yeah. fixed, but that this is. is cool. This is you got to glue back together. Here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I made Greg glue her back together for me. <laughs> really? Cool. Do we have lighting there? I get one yeah, side yeah. of lighting. I don't know. It's it's atmospheric lighting. And that, it. that we, STL we do, we was do uh, from character Mildred. printing services. Yeah, well, that that STL was from Eldritch Foundry and uh, and printed by by Richard. And, I have uh, one too, though. Mine's some mine's somewhere. Uh, we also we are having a giveaway as well. If you want to keep your eyes peeled for that, should be an announcement tomorrow. Um, a collaboration between several artists uh, and other bits and pieces, and a couple of hundred pounds worth of stuff being given away. Cool. So uh, keep an eye out on the page for that, and it's being shipped out worldwide. So. Should be fun, including one of my painted beholders is going up on there as well. Ooh. Oh, nice, nice. That's it for so, me, Steve. Thank you. Uh, and of course, with Christmas just around the corner, if you are in need of any presents for any of your family members, including Beast House, <laughs> you can just head to our merch page at uh, fullpool.com and go mad. Spend away. Yeah. Uh, right. So I will hand out the obligatory. Um, Hero points. Woo! Yay! I don't know so how many by, I have by, now. By the power of, you should only have three, because that's the max you can have. So by the power of the internet, here they come. The magic that never stops oh. giving. <laughs> so uh, she, she was too slow. I know. Okay, so if everyone is ready, we shall launch ourselves into this game. Go. I'll see you after the credits. Go. Go, 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 go. So, after clearing level two of the dungeon, you decided to return to town to look up once again with Lex and take a bit of a rest and recover uh, your spells, your abilities, make a couple of trades um, and switch some rooms and some weapons and get a cup of tea. And <clears throat> So you uh, you return to the dungeon, you trace your footsteps through level two, and you reach the top of the stairs. You descend down into the darkness for a few moments. Eventually, those stairs open up into a corridor, which runs east-west. It's dark, it's musty, 
and there is a smell of dust and mould in the air. The darkness feels close and you get this sense of claustrophobia. The, the, the walls are closing in. There's scant light. Um, you can see across the walls of the corridor, there's some fungal blooms that have got this bioluminescence. So there's a, a sort of a dimly blue glow uh, on patches of wall here and there, but otherwise it is it's dark, it's pitch black. If you're going to want to see anything in any real detail, you're going to need to find or light your own light source. I hold up my staff and bang it onto the ground and I speak the word Shirak. Okay. I cast a light. <laughs> Excellent. So, let's uh, reveal the corridor. Um, so this corridor, you can see it runs east-west. Opposite you is another set of stairs. Um, at the right-hand end of the corridor is a door. And to your left, um, the corridor opens up into a, a, a wider area. However, you can't really see any detail in that wider area because now that you've lit, lit the, the, the light source, you can see there is this mist flowing. Um, it's about ankle height all the way along the corridor and it's emanating from that open area to your left and heading towards the door on the right. Um, and you can't really see any detail in that in that particular room because it is almost solidly packed with white mist but it's it's ankle high it's ankle high as it comes out of the room and flows towards the door to your right the room itself is completely filled with mist oh okay hmm looks like someone left their uh, dry ice machine on <laughs> maybe we should go in there Turn it off for them. You know, do you, do you do you detect any sort of magical reason that this mist could be occurring, Weird. or do we think this is weirdly there's there's a magic all over the place in, in here? It's, mm. it's just seems to be in the air. Um, but I will cast detect magic just in case there is something stronger nearby. So I'll cast yeah. detect magic. It gives me thirty foot. Really, is that? enough to get this room it is enough to get the room yeah um you don't see any magical emanations coming from that direction in fact you don't see any magical emanations coming from anywhere in this corridor other than the magical items you're carrying on your persons okay. I, I will add at this point that logan you um you have been in this corridor before you, your brother, and your two teammates actually came down the stairs opposite the ones you've just come down now. When you reached this corridor, uh, you all felt this this sense of uh, claustrophobia, this sense of foreboding. And um, to make matters worse, you caught sight of one of the creatures, um, and, it, and it walked through that door that's at the right-hand side of the corridor. Um, and the creature... Uh, I'm going to just add the artwork to the stage so the map is going to disappear. Uh, looks like this. Of course it does. It's a ghoul. <laughs> um, so no no surprise, Zibub, uh, the, uh, sorry, um, the versus Zibub did tell you that last week. Now the, the Pathfinder ghouls are a lot more vicious than Dungeons and Dragons ghouls. Because oh, yeah. these ones are semi, well, kind of intelligent. Semi -intelligent. Well, yeah, it obviously knows how to recite Hamlet, so. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so the, the mist is just creeping creeping me out. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to creep down and check the door at the end of the hall. Okay. If you make me, make me a stealth check. If he goes that way, I'll go. You're going to the door. As Logan goes to the door, I'll go to the, the room with the fog. Yeah, I okay. want, and I want to follow behind um, Professor Kingsman, and uh, let's see if I sense the presence of any traps because I have Trap Finder as a class feat. Oh, go for it! Right, right. so um, for myself. 
18 for yourself. So move down to the end of the corridor. Uh, Darid, what are you doing? Are you going to go go with Logan? Because Lex has gone with um, Professor King. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll go with Logan. Okay. But to so, remain a little bit behind watching what the, the folk that know what to look for when it's uh, trap related. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, Lex, make me a perception check, please. 25. Okay, nice. Um, you do not sense any traps. Um, this so is good. I've revealed so... the room, but I will tell you that you can't see the doors. The, the mist is that thick that you cannot see the walls. So I, I, I you can basically in. see the five foot step you're stood in. I, I should probably not have said I step in. I should probably put my yeah. hand in it first or or my staff. But I've, I'll step in yeah. like it's a, a bit like it's a phone party, but yeah. in fog. Yeah, that, that, that that's a good description. Okay. You can I'll, basically I'll, see I'll... You know, this, but not a lot else. Yeah. Um, obviously, I, I... The, the, the temperature drops quite a bit. Um, and you see water um, droplets form on, on your skin. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So it is mist, it's not smoke. And it doesn't smell like burning, it is mist. It is, is mist. There, is it uh, like damp? Yes. Or is, is there, a, is there a, I'm thinking about the, the ghoul, so is there a smell of rot? No. Like a cemetery? No. Smell? In, in fact, in this particular area, that musty and mouldy smell sort of disappears. So you get the, you, you almost get the, the, the smell of, um, of sort of rain. Okay. The, the smell of rot has gone. So uh, there's this. Um... I'll turn around back to the corridor and kind of like pop my head out the mist. <laughs> legs, legs, look. look. Look, look, come inside. You can't see anything. Look. All right. Le Lex Completely joins obscure. Kingsman, just kind of hangs out feels her way around and, and stays kind of near him. Oh, it, it it's actually kind of nice down here. Yeah, a little damp, but it definitely s smells better. What do you think could cause this, Kingsman? Professor? I, I, I don't really know. I mean, it could be a number of things, but I was thinking it's a, um, because Logan mentioned the ghoul, it was quite a good description, and uh, I thought it might be a cemetery or something like that, you know. Bunch of graves. It doesn't smell that way. It smells like um, like a forest, really. It's quite nice. Uh, Lex is gonna walk around the 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 room, feeling the walls, okay. since she can't so, see them. So when you hit that square, you mm -hmm. you see and feel the door in front of you. Um, we're gonna switch to Logan and Darid. Cool. Um, so Logan, you've stealthed to the end of the corridor, and I assume Darid, you've you've sort of walked a little bit further behind so you don't make too much noise um, when you get to the door do you want to make me a perception check are you going to search traps and check where it's locked and stuff like that i'm going to check to see uh, i'll check the door first yeah uh, 30. okay so this door is locked um, it is an internal lock. It's not a slide bolt or anything like that. So it looks like it would require a key to open. Uh, or you could attempt to pick the lock if you wish. Um, and it is not trapped. Okay. Uh, I'm, it's not, the door is locked. Uh, should we see if there's another way around or I can try to pick it? Didn't hear you there, Richard. Oh, it's a picket. Okay. okay. He, he said it a while ago. <laughs> okay. All right. Like... All right. Well, I lean back down. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to pop the door. Okay. Uh twenty one. Okay. You fiddle around the lock for for a while. And as you're doing that behind you down the corridor there is a very very loud crash Kingsman and Lex can you both roll me a d20 please yes just no bonus just a straight 
Just a straight 20. Ooh. Wrong. No Unlucky bonus. 13. A 16 Oh shit, and it's Friday the 13th. Yeah. What to say? Okay, so Lex, you got 16, yeah? Yep. Kingsman, you got 13. 13. Okay. Uh, what is your armor class? Who? Kingsman, sorry. What is your armor class? <laughs> armor class is, it is 17, but I can I can up that if I need to. Okay. <laughs> in, in case of emergency. So, um, from out of the mist flies a tentacle. Right. And it grabs hold of you, Kingsman, hitting armor class 33. Oh, oh, oh no. This is a, like, big? If it hits it, it's up. big enough. It is right. big enough. It wraps around the, the core of your body, trapping your arms down by your side. And the crash that Logan and Darad hear is as it throws you into the door on the opposite side of the room. So if you move your token to the north side of the room, please. I shall. Okay. You are going to take... 140 points of damage. Uh, <laughs> 32 <laughs> points of damage. <laughs> and can you tell me your... Um, so your fortitude saving throw will have a, a number next to it. Uh, 42, 42, plus 8. Plus 8. Okay. Um, so you are also grabbed. So you are you are trapped in this vice-like grip. As soon as that happens, this, this tentacle grabs you, smashes you in the door, and then you're in this vice-like grip. The, um, the mist suddenly retracts into the corner of the room revealing this creature um, oh, standing in the uh, it, Right, so I I will say that the artwork is not a mist stalker. That's a vampire mist, okay? Okay. Right. There is no there's no artwork for a mist stalker. What a mist stalker actually is, is, is a combination of three water elementals who bound together into a single creature. So I've, I've robbed vampire mist for some artwork, but it's okay. it's not that creature, okay? Just, just for... For, for clear but it's it's a mist creature uh, and it is stood in the corner room and this, this tentacle comes out of the center of its mass uh, and has you in this vice-like grip so um can everyone roll me initiative please all right uh, initiative 25 24 um <coughs> 12. And remember, you can put your initiative into your uh, album. Yeah, put it in already. Okay, so Logan, you, you had a, rolled a stealth check, so you can use that um, skill as your initiative roll if you wish. Stealth check for myself. When you said it was a ten, I was thinking like a tentacle of mist, like a misty tentacle or something like that. But that, like that is, in octopus. essence, what it is. Yes, okay. it is. It is a, I mean, the whole creature is just made out of mist, and it can, it can either disperse itself or solidify uh, yeah. into into the creature. My, so it's uh, now solidified. My arms are trapped in my body, so I can't. Yes. Okay. Well, I can still cast spells. You can try to escape. Yep. Uh, okay. Uh, is everybody got their initiatives in? Um, yes. Logan, have you done yours? What did you roll? I'm working on it. I had a tech issue. Okay. Right. It is Logan, you're up first. Hmm. Well, I miss. After hearing the crash, uh, we'll leave the door and come down the hallway. Yeah, you can see. Uh, you can see this creature at the end of the hallway. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, it's going to be one action to close with it. Yep. Okay. All right. And then I'll use my other two actions to attack. Okay, go for it. Well, that one doesn't help me at all. <laughs> oh. Uh, no, that is a critical miss. Um, so you lose your next action. Unfortunately, I'm going to rule the, the actual one will lose your next action. Okay, um, so I'm just going to run down the hallway and yell, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's uh, your go over to my go. Um, so, Professor Kingsman. You feel this vice-like grip become even tighter as it starts to constrict and squeeze your body. Please yep. make me a fortitude saving throw. Oh, shit. Uh, 22. Okay, that is a pass. Um, please make me two more. Okay, so I've got 22 on the first one. Uh, that's a 19 plus 8. Okay, and next... And, uh, the final one is a twelve. Uh, a twelve, no bonus. That's that's total that score. That includes the right. bonus. Yeah. Right. So you will take for the first two actions. It squeezes four. Yeah. So that's eight and seven fifteen. You take seven points of damage for the first two actions, and the last one is twelve. So that's nineteen points of damage in total. <laughs> As it spends the entire round just squeezing you, squeezing the oh, life out of you. You, so Logan and Alex can see this. You see me just like, to the point where my head, uh, my mouth is open. I'm trying to scream. Um, there is no air, and you just see that at this point, the blood is being trapped in my head, and my head is going red, and then my eyes ugh, start to bulge. I am now unconscious. Okay. Oh. okay. So that's. And I had a plan as well, Steve. I had a plan. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, sure it would have did. been. Well, in fact, it is your go next. So I'm unconscious. Um, you're <laughs> yeah. unconscious, but you do get to make a, a death save, or you can use your, one of your hero points to recover. It's up to you. Um, I, the yeah, creature is it's... going to let go of you. If I use my hero point. And recover can i yep. also then attack uh no no you can i will let you come back to one hit point um so you can recover and come back to one hit point but you would just be prone it'd be a, a, the full round of recovery okay i'm i i'll be prone okay i'll, I'll use my hit my hit point yeah uh where is it there you go It wasn't ready. It wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Okay, thank you. Right, so you're on one hit point, but you are prone, um, and yep. the creature has released you. Yep, we paid top dollar for these special effects, and it wasn't ready. Okay, Derrid, uh, you're down the end of the corridor. You turn as well, seeing uh, after hearing the crash, Logan has taken off at a flat run down the corridor, um, and you see you see Kingsman feet poking. Uh, from I, that, I see there. Kingsman drop. You see, yeah, you can see he's and his prone form laying on the floor. Obviously, the you said the art doesn't match this thing, so it's not an undead creature. It's not an undead creature, no, no. That, that, and that's one of the reasons I want to make that clear, so you didn't, you know, get any confusion over doing heal and doing negative damage. It's not undead. Right. I've just, well, I've seen Kingsman get taken off damage to go, to drop. So I'm going to stay where I am. Because um, luckily with my reach spell, I, I should be able to, I think I can even... It's 30 feet I've got uh, range. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Yeah, he's 30. just yeah, in range. But with, but with yeah, I've got reach spell anyway, so it will... It pushes my the, the what's it out, so I'll do a three action heal. Um, uh, it, it, he is the only one that's taken any damage, 
so you might be better off doing the two action version because it can then be directed at him at 30 feet specifically oh yes it has a range of 30 feet yeah and increases it... the hit points restored by eight yes so that is and it's d10s now as well for my yeah, you don't you don't have to roll for the two action version it would be um you're you're at level two, yeah. So I believe it'd be yeah. twenty hit points. Mate. Okay, so yeah, you get twenty hit points then, Kingsman. Nice, thank you very much. Um, and if that's the case, so that's only using two actions. Can I, I can move up then, can't I? You can, yes. Um, my movement is twenty feet. There we go. So five, ten, fifteen, twenty. There we go. Okay. Hey, that's your go over. So, Lex, uh, you're up next. Awesome. Uh, watching the creature just absolutely devastate the professor, uh, Lex is going to go in uh, with an attack uh, with her elven curve blade. So, um, yeah, let's see. What do I do? I hit. Um, I, brought, I guess I should probably move over one to attack. I can attack from there, right? Uh, you can uh, you can move over if you wanted to, because then maybe Logan could step out oh, yeah. and get the flanking. That sounds good. I'll do that. Um... <laughs> oh, God. If you just rolled a nat one. Yep, yep, yep. No. yep. I am going to spend a hero point because we're not playing that this early in the game. Right when I'm back. <laughs> oh, that is much better. That is going to be um, 18 plus 11. Uh, so 29. Oh, that that's was that's very crazy. close to being a critical. Uh, unfortunately, you missed it by one. Ah, uh, well, at least we get to attack now. So, um, with a brilliant damage of, uh, 16. 16 is good damage. Well done. Okay. And that's slashing, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's good. Right. So. Yeah. We're off the board. It has taken some damage. Um, the focus, you being the only one, it has damage done to it now. Uh, it is focusing a little bit on you. Um, at the top of the round, sorry, you've only had one attack. <laughs> you get some more yeah. attacks. Yeah, I am. You know, I'll go. I'm going to go in for a second attack. So. Go for it. Uh, uh, 28. Attack, 28 is so it yeah that yeah. hits um yeah, let's just roll some action don't forget you got reduced because you're multi-attack yes. me, so that's probably, of course yeah um, but it's still so hit 23 is still hit yeah and we're gonna do wait that's the wrong let's do a proper d8 not a d4 here uh because i'm not gonna rely i'm gonna rely on my own rolling oh yes um that'll be 10. okay and then um you know we don't have like this doesn't have, like, I forget if Pathfinder has like a defense. Can I go into a defense position for my uh, third round? Uh, I guess it doesn't really, like, as if I'm expecting an attack. No, I'll just wait because I'll probably yeah. pull. All right, if you had attack. a shield, you could blaze your shield. Yeah. But you, you don't, so. Yeah. Uh, third attack, 21 plus whatever penalty. Uh, so it would be one plus minus. one. That's 22. It's a hit. Cool. And then that. Oh, so you 21 up. minus. Was that 21 with all your bonuses added? Yeah, to with it? all my bonuses. Okay, yeah. it's, it's only 11 then, so no, it's a miss. Okay. Um, then that's it. That's Lex's turn. Okay. Uh, you did damage. That was good damage. Mm -hmm. It is injured. It's not uh, It's not overly injured, though, so he's still standing. And Logan, you're up at the top of the round. Okay, well, this time I'm going to try to do something to him. Do you want to step into a flanking position? Yes. Fifteen. Fifteen is a miss. Um, do you want to take another attack? Yeah, I'm going to try to catch it with the back swing. Okay. No, apparently I'm not. Do you want to try for the third? Uh, no, I think I'm going to stay where I'm at and be safe. Okay, okay, right. So the stalker is up next, and uh, Lex, it's going to attack you. Fantastic! Um, I'm a class of sixteen. Ooh, I'm an armor class of twenty-one. 
Okay, I rolled a natural two. Um, I've just rolled a natural two again, um, and it's going to try for a third time. Uh, that is the twelve. Uh, so that's armor class sixteen again, which is a miss. Nice. So that's three misses on a row. Cool. Um, with three times you well. shoot out, you manage to evade and dodge uh, all three attacks. Um, Kingsman, it, you're up next. You are prone, um, but you're now on 21 hit points. Um, can I do two things? I want to want to get up, but I, I've noticed the door um, that is kind of behind me. Yeah. So I want to create some space because that thing managed to really seriously hurt me yeah um i want to see if the first i'm gonna see if the door's open if it is i'm gonna step in to create some space but also to create some shielding and then i'm gonna attack it okay so the door is open um yeah. so you can step in that's not a problem it will give you some cover um and then i want to do So you have you have two actions left um, because of interacting with a door and making your five foot step. So you've got two actions left. Are you still pretty wounded? Uh, I, I've got twenty hit points. Twenty one hit points. That's it. Um, I'm a, I'm a, so I'm about half. Um, and I'm gonna cast acid arrow. Okay. On this roll thing. to hit for me then, please. Okay. Uh, that's a fourteen. It's not going to hit. A fourteen total. Yes. What did you roll on the dice? Five. Oh. Right. Uh, yeah. So unfortunately, that misses. Okay. Do you want to use another that, hero point? No. Um, that is a double action. So I've used all my actions. So that's it. I'm done. Okay. Um, Darren, you're up next. Okay, so... Uh, I'm going to move in 5, 10 to be a bit of a block between Kingsman. Um, you say you're still pretty wounded. I, I'm down to half, but I'm okay. Right. I'm okay. Well, I'm going to use my uh, medicine check to patch wounds. Yeah, so, so I've got, bat, bat, battle medicine, yeah. I've got battle medicine, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Roll your medicine check for me then, please. So that is my best, pretty much best stat, medicine. At 25 uh, on the medicine. Yeah, okay. And uh, it's uh, 2d8, I think. Uh, D10s now for me because it's... Uh, goes with that, I think. Yeah, for your healing hands. Yeah. Uh, you get another 18 hit points back. Nice. Whoa, so you 39 much. you're on now. Um, and that is... I've still got one action left there, haven't I? Still got one action left, yeah. Uh, can I hit it for an action? You can. Uh, okay. Ooh, uh, rolled a nine. Uh, does an eighteen hit? Uh, an eighteen misses. You need uh, twenty to hit. I missed that, I'm afraid. Okay, um, Lex, back to you. Oh, we're just gonna <clears throat> keep hacking up. So brilliant. That would be a total of thirty. A thirty is a crit. Yes. Nice. And yes. don't forget your sneak attack damage. Yep. Has anyone hit it yet? Lex. Oh, yeah, I've been. <laughs> so that gives... Oh, wait, that can't be right. Maybe it is. Let me... Let me... I've re... I used the math program to roll, and it's saying the total of 20 damage? Is that possible? So you'd roll... So it... you're, 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 what you're using your elven blade. Yep, my 1d8 plus 4, and then plus 1d6 yeah. precision. Uh, uh, isn't your... 
uh, um, snakes have damage now 2d6 snake fourth level. oh you're right so yes it is a total of 20 uh, and you add that together and then double the whole lot so yeah 20 damage probably is correct I love it well done nice that's hard that's why we have programs <laughs> um cool <laughs> then uh let's just roll again oh that's a measly 25 uh, 25 hits but it's not a critical yeah and that gives us a um well that's the wrong dice meredith that's a proper dice that gives us a nine damage nine damage okay and do then you want last... to go oh for the last hit i do i do i do i do that's not gonna make it that's a 17. okay that's that's just a miss <sighs> Um, you did some heavy damage there. You managed to bury your blade deep into its centre mass. It is looking extremely wounded as we enter at the top of the round. And Logan, you're up next. Okay. Nineteen. Nineteen misses. Oh. Okay. Are you, uh, are you making some extremely low rolls? Yes. And they just get lower. It's, <laughs> it's because you I, don't have the. Uh, I know. Dice. Yeah, I know. I think I need to get those dice set. Um, Pat, no, I've made a mistake because you're flanking with Lex, so yes. I need to take two off my armor class. So your 19 hits. Because okay. the 20 becomes 18. So, sorry, that was my fault. So, roll your damage. Eight points. How would you like to kill the creature? Oh, Great. nice. Drive the sword well home. I'm going to lean on it and just shove it in deep. So, you lean hard into the strike, um, yes. thrusting it to where it's triple hearts would be because the creature is made in three water elementals um as you do so the mist completely loses cohesion and quite a lot of water splashes to the floor around you um and spreads out into the room and um lex you happen to notice that quite a bit of this water passes under the wall in the west of the room so oh. it passes if you want to look at the map under the wall in this location here Interesting. I am going to look for a secret door. Go for it. Roll me a perception check, please. Of course. Ah. Oh, not 20. Not 29. Well done. Well done. <laughs> uh, there is indeed a secret door. Uh, it swings open smoothly into a small five foot chamber where you find the following items yes. uh, and i'm just going to tell you what they are um there are two <laughs> lesser damned. <laughs> two lesser bravos brews um, two lesser healing potions a moderate skeptics elixir Ooh. and a potion of bark skin Uh, I would say one of you three definitely have bark skin because you're all pretty much front line. Um, dish out the healing potions. What, what was the first thing? You got a bruise. Brew. Lesser, lesser Bravo's bruise. Like Bravo. brew? A... Like a beer. Um, <laughs> what is it? Or bruise like I'm going to punch someone and leave a bruise. Brew, bruise as in a beer. An ale, if you will. Maybe it's an IPA. I don't know. I'm not judging. They're, they're, they're home brewing, yeah. So, uh, Bravo's Brews, or Bravo, Bravo's Brew, um, gives you a bonus on your will saving throw. Um, specifically yeah. against fear. So, it gives you a plus one bonus saving throw against fear. For how long? Uh, good question. You can always make it up, Steve. 
we'll, we'll say you can drink it and then it will last until you next have to make a fear roll. Okay. What? Come here. Because it does not specify. Hey, cat, cat. Oh, next hour. <laughs> next hour. Oh, next an hour. hour. Yeah. That's nice. Real time hour or game time hour? <laughs> We'll, we'll say real time now. Okay. Nice. Okay. So that's uh, that's the treasure. Um, <laughs> Kingsman, the corridor that you went into carries on yep. for about 15 feet. Halfway down that corridor, there's a door in the left hand wall. Um, and then there is another door to the north at the end of the corridor. Okay. Are you, are you lot dishing out your potions? Yes, no? Are you lot dishing out your potions? Who's oh. got all the potions? Yeah, I don't know who, who has them. I mean, I'm, yeah. I mean, you've got two healing potions. Do you want to give those to the cleric or do you want to give those to someone else? One of you take the bark skin. Might be yeah, advisable I'll... for you guys to take the healing potions. You, especially Kingsman. Yes. Um, and I uh... say, let's give Logan the other one. Um... That'd be good because I used my last one last time. Yeah. Okay, so it's a lesser healing potion. You might want to check bark skin because I'm not sure it would stack if anyone is wearing armor. Mm. So you you might be better off taking the bark skin potion. What do you say, you, Kingsman? Because you're not currently wearing armor. I need to uh, type these in. Bark skin. Can you not? Don't Bark use that. Okay, so um, there's two doors, north or west. I um, as I'm stashing these potions into my backpack. Um, okay, will... Kingsman's decided where we're going. Looks like. I, I I'm just I found this corridor. I'm just going to go for a, a walk. <laughs> is this? Is the... The mist is done. The mist is the gone. mist is gone. Yes, dissipated, disappeared. Um, yeah, gone. Um, I am going to see if this north door is unlocked. It is unlocked. Yes, are you opening the door? I'll take a look back to see if anyone's following me. It's like, hey, yes, just curious. Oh, well, Darren is is following you. Yeah, Oh, right, Darren, you've got that door. I've got this door. Ready on three. One, One two, two, three. No, no, on me. With, with me, <laughs> not after me. We can start again. Ready? One, two, three. Uh, we both open the doors at the same time. Although Darren okay. looks like he went first. <laughs> Darren, well, I can't simultaneously turn the phone <laughs> Uh, so, Darren, the door that you open opens up onto a set of stairs that lead upwards. However, about halfway up, you can see that the ceiling has collapsed inwards, preventing any access from the, to the floor above from this side. Hmm. So, uh, you can't continue up this way. Kingsman. The room that you open the door into, um, its walls are decorated with hundreds upon hundreds, probably thousands of tiny little hash marks. So tally marks, you know, the oh, one, two, wow. three, four, five. Um, as if someone has been counting days for ages. Like to the northwest um, of this room, there is an iron door. So you can see that in the, in the top left-hand corner. And it's an iron door with a barred window. So it's like a cell door. You know, so there's a little hatch in the bottom for passing the food tray through, and then there's three bars, um, and it's an iron bound door. Um, there's a large but open padlock which is hanging from the door's latch, so it is a prison door, but it's it's unlocked. However, what immediately draws your attention here is standing in the corner of the room. Leaning upon a large pole arm is a thoroughly bored looking devil. You can see a devil. The, a devil. 
You can okay. see it just about musters enough interest to look up and glance in your direction and unenthusiastically say, Halt, who goes there? Please stop. <laughs> in the name of Belcora, as this is a restricted area. Uh, uh, Surrender your equipment and submit immediately for incarceration. Mm, How about no? No, I don't think so. Uh, no. It doesn't sound like a fun time. So just uh, to just play that, that is the creature that you're uh, currently looking no, at. Like a, a super scary devil. He's like, like, no. like, like a, you know. Is he like dog sized? Is he small? Yeah. He, he's, he he's he's somewhere between dwarf and human, should we say? Oh, so he's okay. quite so he's... squat and round. He's gonna... a little bit taller than you. I was going to say he's shorter than me, but no, he's I'm a dwarf. Um... Yeah. I just, you know, uh... how about this? How about we just go back the way we came, and you go back to doing whatever it was you weren't doing? I, I don't think this is the room we were looking for. No, this is definitely not the devil we were looking this is, for. This is never the, the room that, that anyone's looking for. You may be the first people that I've seen in... Well, I can't even be bothered to count the hash marks, if I'm being totally honest with you. It's you hundreds know, of so years. You're, you're the... So you've been making these marks, not the prisoner? Oh, the prisoner's been dead for... Well, I really can't be bothered to count the marks. I guess it's hundreds of years. The last <laughs> command that I was given was to stand here and and guard this vital prisoner here, the former chef of my master, Belcora, who unfortunately for him overspiced one of her mills and he was sentenced to imprisonment for causing bellyache, I guess. And is, is he a devil like you? No, he's a skeleton. He's a, he's a <laughs> you mean originally, or he's now a skeleton? Oh, he's now a skeleton. He's dead. Originally, he was a chef. Human. Francois was his name. Quite exotic, I understand. Well an trained. exotic human? Cook. He was an exotic cook. A human? Yes. I believe that's what they're called anyway. <laughs> anyway, this is really taking up lots of my time. It's and you can yes, tell I'm very busy. Mine as well. Um, if you'd like to hand over your equipment now and make your way into the cell, that'd be great. At least I'll have something to guard. Well, it's currently occupied, isn't it? He's, he's in there, Francois. Well, I'm sure he'll move over. <laughs> he doesn't seem the sort of chap that makes much of a fuss, I'm being honest with you. Can I, can I, just, just before we do, can I just clarify? Is it, can I ask you questions? Is, is that okay? I guess there's You've nothing in my con contract you... that would stop you from asking the question. Yeah, so I'm, I'm merely here guarding this vital restricted Check. area. Dead skeleton. Yes. But it was the last command I was given. Yes, my contract exactly. stipulates that... I must follow the commands of the summoner, Belcora, um, and do her bidding. Um, yes. Unfortunately, I don't have a copy of my contract, so I don't know when that time was up. I mean, it's been several centuries since I was last given a command. Uh, Didn't you I'm, just leave because he's dead? I, ca I can't leave my post. I was commanded to stand here and guard the chef. Because you're That's, a devil? Because I'm a devil. Because that is yes. what I was told to do. Are Are there any more of you guys on on the on, on this level? On this level, no. There is there is a Zibub upstairs. You may have come across him. He's the janitor. He, he's the fly. Yeah, I heard yes, he licked some Zibub. people. A Zibub is one of our kind that is uh, slightly fly-like, completely useless, miserable creatures. Have zero power. Yes, we, we did run into him. Um, yeah. So, hmm. Um, I, can I ask you a question, Devil? 
Mr. Devil. Seems to be the theme of today, so sure. yeah, please. Go so, away. do do you take orders from anyone or only from Belcora? Uh, Volok as well. I've been known to take orders from Volok, but uh, yeah, it's, it's been a while. I've been, Can, I've been what here. if I just gave you an order to go back from where you came from? Can I just do that? Like, you're free, go. I mean, we could we could try. Uh, I, yeah. I, I'm, we could try. Yeah. Uh, give sure. It a go. Okay. Came to hell or wherever you're from. Go back. <laughs> go on vacation. So uh, uh, let me get this straight. You're you're telling me to go to hell. Well, isn't that where you're from? Yes. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, go to hell. I'm feeling like it hasn't worked. Oh. You're still here. So if, well, if you were to follow it's automatic, you would well, it, just go? It, it depends on, on written what's written in my contract. I mean... What if we what gave if, you a I, new contract? Yeah. That we'd need to make sure that the old one was voided. Where's the old contract? Uh, there, there's a question that was worth asking. I would imagine it is somewhere within the library. You are aware that you're on the library level, I assume. <laughs> just yeah, yeah. Yes. No one, no one mentioned library. It was full of. Well, full actually, of books. we were looking for the main door to the library. Could you give us directions? Uh, well, it's um, it's back down the corridor and and to your left. Shit. Can you unlock it for us? I think, I think well, it was locked. I, and someone I, I, I don't locked. have a key, um, and unfortunately, there's this thing called a contract, which means I have to stand here and guard the very important chef that is in the prison cell, as that was the last command that was given to me several centuries ago. But you say centuries, and I, I understand you've been here, but you've been in this room for centuries watching a dead human watching a dead human decompose and become a very very clean and bleached skeleton i might add it's an interesting scientific experiment observing closely the decomposition of a human body and can you leave this can you enter this corridor where we are and further down can you actually leave no all but right. that doesn't mean you should take that as an opportunity to leave this room and escape my clutches. No, I, I did think... ask quite nicely for you to submit to immediate incarceration. Well, where? how about this? We're going to leave. You're going to stay here because you have to. But what if we found your contract and helped you get out of it? We'll call it even? Uh, yes. I, I, and tell you what. <laughs> If you find my contract, yeah, and return it here, then I can try and find a way out of this um, situation that I find myself in, and then maybe, maybe, I might be grateful enough to give you some information about what lies further down inside this um, dungeon. That sounds like a great. Uh, we we it... can do this. Oh, uh, also, do you, do you? happen to have a, a name we can call you other than Mr. Mr. Devil? Uh, uh, my name's Corlock. Oh, okay. I'm Corlock. Alright. Um... And and the contract is in the library, which is down through the door. Yes, it will be in the library, but I, I doubt it's in the main library. I would imagine that it's in uh, Belcora's private, restricted um, stores, shall we say. And do you know uh like that there's another door in this corridor which leads to a set of stairs and those stairs have been collapsed do you know where they would have taken you originally oh they they go to the level above i i kind of figured that one out yes um and in the fog room <laughs> there's a door in the south where would that take us uh well there's a uh um there's there's a spy chamber, actually. A spy a, chamber. A spy chamber. Yes, Belcora, when she had uh, visitors, um, used to take people to that area. And there's there's two waiting rooms, shall we say, before people were then taken to her uh, her offices and her private reading chambers. Um, one of them um, is, is is fairly innocuous. 
uh, mm-hmm. is just the waiting area. But the other one was uh, was was set up with a series of spy holes and teleportation circles. So if she felt that person was particularly dangerous, she could have her guards appear from secret doors either side of the room and take them directly into custody. Well, two things have piqued my interest. I mean, one, one of first of all, um, a room in spy holes is quite interesting. But the other thing was, you say a personal reading room. Yes. Might there still be some books there? Uh, quite likely to be, yes. Would your contract be there? Uh, no, I would imagine that uh, the contract would be in a private sanctum, private area of the library, a, a restricted uh, material. There's lots of private areas. Yeah, just um, out of curiosity, when was the last time you even saw Belcora? Mm, it was over 500 years ago. Gotcha, okay. All right. Thank you, um, not Richmond, though you, you're giving off some, you know, I, I'd call you Richmond. It's, it's a good name, good human name for you. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how I feel about being adopted by a party of humans and a dwarf, but thank uh, you. Technically an elf, it's fine, don't worry, half. It, to be honest, I Careful. have trouble telling the difference. That's the ears, don't worry. I would say this has been the most fun I've had in several centuries, but I'm not sure I can muster the energy to lie that hard. Well, we'll be seeing you. Uh, I have some hard guarding to do. Francois may look like he might make a break for it today. Lex just, like, slowly just backs out of this very awkward conversation. (laughs) Like, okay, then. We'll, um, and looks at her companions. We'll, um, yes, time to. Uh, we'll find your contract and we'll be yeah. back shortly. Close the door on the way oh, out. Slowly. Bye. <laughs> goodbye. 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 Click. Guys, we're not. Are we going to. No. I, well, I guess we'll see what happens. <laughs> I did think because you started talking about Belcora and I was thinking, don't mention she's dead. Nope. <laughs> nope. So, yeah. Depends on what the contract says, so whether uh, that would have any bearing on, yep. on whether he'd be free or, free or not. But uh, yeah, we'll it's up to you if you go and get his contract or not. Yeah. Sounds like a fun side quest if it happens. So, um, <laughs> Lex, Richmond, Richmond just said um, the personal reading rooms and the spy room. That sounds quite interesting. Yeah, that sounds. I mean, gonna, yeah, I think it's closer. We, we need a key for the library anyway, so why don't we go. Um, Check out what well, the key must be in the personal reading, right? One would hope. Okay, Lex will, Lex will go first down the uh, other door. Okie dokie. Especially since it's a spy room, I'm gonna look for for things that are hidden in the spy room. Okay, um, so you enter into a quite long corridor. Um, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, you enter into a quite a long corridor. It's about 40 foot long. Uh, there's a door in the left hand wall uh, about halfway along, or sorry, after 15 feet. A door in the right hand wall about halfway along, and then a door at the end of the corridor. Okay. So, according to Richmond, there. Should we take a door each again? Yeah, let's take a door each. I'll go for this first door. I'll take the okay. door at the end of the hall. Okay. Yes, three doors. Three doors. Yeah. Three and I'm going to, obviously, when I open my door, I'm going to roll perception, so. And, and, and ready. On on three. Ready. Yep. One, one, two. No, what, no, no that's two. Uh, that's, oh. that's one, two, and that's three. Open. Throw it open. Wow, a, a couch. I rolled a 27 <laughs> perception, and I see a couch. <laughs> see a couch uh kingsman you also see a couch i can and see i can see Logan, the, couch. Yes. the door is locked <laughs> okay well i get out my tools and so go to work on the door okay so um lex an ancient tattered sofa sits in against the east wall of this room the south wall however shimmers with strange green light the same greenish light you followed from the level above. 
As you enter, words form upon the south wall. Belcora fell to the Rose Guard, but we never knew of the vaults below. And as those words fade, the green ribbons once again move to the floor, leave the room and head north up the corridor before turning east. Okay. I relay this to my companions. Okay, so Darad, you see uh, these green ribbons move past you, go up the corridor and in this direction. So back the way you came. I communicate vastly as everyone comes out of the rooms. Um, Kingsman, an ancient sofa with its covering torn open and its stuffing and springs revealed sits against the west wall of this room. And that, that, that's it. That is it. Oh, do you Ooh, wish I got the to party do anything? Room. Yeah, you, I, I, Meredith got all these funky ribbons and went words, and I get nothing. A sofa. Um, get you a get sofa. dust. You get a tattered uh, couch now. I'll, I'll stick my head out and see what all the noise is going on about. Okay, do so you ribbons? also see these ribbons, um, and they're the same ones that came out of the wish room upstairs on level two. Uh, they leave the room, they, they go up the corridor, and then they turn to the right, so back the way you came. Are they, like, moving? Or yes, are they, they like, moving. footprints? No, yeah. they're, they're, they're sort of like uh, green, green, not green arrows, but green lines just flying across the floor. I got a 30 to unlock the door. Okay. Um... So the room is quite large. Oh, not leave that. Uh, and this is another sort of reading room, anti-chamber type deal. Um, it has uh, two large sofas and some um, sort of comfortable looking armchairs, I guess, in the room. I've got a better room. I'm going to move into the room and check the couches for coins. Okay. <laughs> You're going to stick your hand down the back of that sofa. Roll, roll a perception check. Uh, you do notice when you enter the room um, that there is a door in the east wall. Uh, I got an 11 for perception. Okay. <laughs> I'll say you managed to scrounge up a couple of copper pieces uh, with right. that rather than fall, fallen down back between the cushions. They might be ancient copper pieces by now. They probably are ancient copper pieces. They, yes, could, be they could be something. worth gold. They could be worth gold. Okay. Uh, I, I let everybody down the hallway know that there's another door in this room. Yeah. So I, I will tell you now for, for the sake of expediency that that door opens up onto a set of stairs. And that set of stairs comes up onto the second level um, adjacent to the teleportation chamber. Oh. So you remember oh, that okay. teleportation chamber? Uh, yeah. Next to that, there was a set of stairs that led down. Those oh, are the ones okay. that lead into this room. So you have now sort of a shortcut back to the teleportation chamber from, from this area. Sweet. Rather sounds, than needing to walk like all the way you, through. We're going to need two. that. But there is nothing else of, of interest in this room. Are the ribbons still floating around? Yeah, they are still flowing backwards and forwards. Um, hey, I got a 24 taking a look around the room before we as we walk out. Okay, there are no uh, secret doors. Uh, Darren, should we... Um... Do you want to follow these uh, ribbons? Could be a clue. They've certainly led us okay so far. Uh, well, I've not had much luck taking points so far. Conversation will, um, of a devil and a giant tentacle. I'll follow the green. Okay, so the, the green goes north and 
it turns uh, east down that corridor leading down this way and you see the arrows passing underneath the door to the library well Lex can you take a look at this door for me yeah Lex goes and uh... it should be unlocked now oh yeah you unlocked it right yeah oh, oh. Nice. perfect and then, then um... you, you did you did unlock it I will place a uh, hand on Lex's shoulder and um, sort of mutter a, a small prayer, casting guidance while you look for traps. Okay. <clears throat> oh, let's see. Do, do, do 21 for my trap check on thievery. Uh, there are oh, no we... traps that you can find. Then I open the door. Okay. Let me get rid of that. Okay, so um, hundreds of stone shelves are carved into the walls of this 15 foot wide hallway. Oh, it's big. While there are many gaps in the collection, there is a staggering number of books, scrolls, and folios on the shelves. Signs hang above several doors off of this hall. And to the south, a faint blue glow flickers beneath a larger sign. So I'm going to tell you what they say. And um, the one to the south, so this one here, says reading room. Uh, this one says repair storage. This is a workroom. And uh, that is all you can say for the moment. All right. Lex is going to... Okay. So before you go in... Oh, yeah. Before I go in. <laughs> Charge in. Because this may change your decision. Yeah. Opposite. Oh! Well, hold on. I swear, I swear it's, what is that? It's a ghoul. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, the ghoul is um, dressed in a blue apron. And it has an armful of books. And stood at the door. Uh, I told you, you observe, they were semi-intelligent. You observe the um, the creature returning books to the shelves. Acting almost a librarian. with some intelligence. Exactly that. You notice several of them moving around the room. Oh. All performing... <laughs> menial tasks however there is one slightly better dressed in a blue robe not a blue apron who approaches you with some authority um, I'm just going to put the art up for this one Dave Ooh. <laughs> I, hold on I, I, what Hanker I <laughs> Coltis <laughs> He's a, he's, a, he's a what's name? He's, he's a cancer <laughs> Are those dead fish on his neck? No. Oh, who, who knows? Maybe. That <laughs> could be anything. That. We Only the basement people at Paizo headquarters really know what's hanging around us. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Lex, stood there with the door open as you are. This creature approaches you. Are you here to make a donation, my dear? We are here to... Oh, we? You, you've brought friends. Check out a book. Um, Richmond, uh, around the corner here, uh, let us know that the library was here. and We were really just um, hoping to find some books. We were, you know, a little weary while we wait for books. Belcora, uh, so we just thought we'd do some reading in the meantime. Are you the are you the gentle ghoul that we can talk to about checking out a book? Yes, yes, I I may run this section, but it is tradition for those that uh, take from the library 
to leave us something. Right. I, I hug my spell book. I, I, I look down at my uh, uh, friends, party members, and uh, like a like a copper, a silver. Like, what do you what do you think? What should we? I, Not a, a soul. An ear, a, oh. a pound of flesh. It depends on what you wish to. Oh, I thought they I book? thought they wanted a book. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm completely wrong. <laughs> yeah. What a, um... Follow me. I will take you to the mistress and we shall uh, decide on an appropriate donation. When when sorry, you, say you say flesh? Mistress, do you, do you mean Miss Belcora? No. Uh, Belcora has passed. Surely you know that. Yeah. I'm talking about the mistress of the library. The director. Director. Lex like slowly backs out and kind of gets behind King Men and say, I don't know, you're a professor, you can deal with these. Uh, I... These seem like your type of people. Um, Akazar and the weights. Not if they want a pound of flesh, no. I don't want to, I'm not, I don't even I think might... I have a pound of flesh on me to give. I might be slubby on the chubby side, but uh, still. Still don't want it to be cut off. I know. Um, well, come follow. Okay. I thought well, at worst they might want a book. And I was not letting them have my book. Not even I'm my a... fa my 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 favorite Beatles and Grins, Counter Chronicles. <gasps> <gasps> um, I don't. They can have the blessing of my own. Um, and I will cast. Um, um, before that happens, bastard. Um, so who's now stood at the front? Not I, me. I, 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 I'm, I'm at the front. Okay. Yeah, I have definitely <laughs> pulled my <laughs> way back. Just back. Say. Please make me a will saving throw. <laughs> sorry about that. Thanks, Lex. Yep. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. Twenty nine. Okay. You feel this wave of compulsion wash over you as the creature's voice changes and it utters the command follow me but you shrug that off you feel compelled for a second only and then you grip hold of your uh, holy symbol harder um, and the creature realizes that it hasn't had the effect so it turns to its ghoul compatriots and says come bring the unwilling ones Roll I, will, if, please. I will okay. release positive energy from my healing uh from my uh holy symbol okay we're gonna go into initiative first so well that's not as good it's 13 Six. plus nine and two I got twenty six. Three. Do not like these low initiative rolls. Oh, ah, uh, dear, this is not. So, have you done their initiative? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Right. It is my go first. As the creature um, says to the ghouls, bring the unwilling ones, two ghouls step forward um, to you, Darad, and they um, they try to grab or They try to grab you. They're going to make an attempt to grab. Uh, what I need from you, please, is your uh, fortitude um, bonus. So your the bonus to your same throw, please. Plus 10. Okay. All right, so these creatures, um, they, they reach out. They're not the strongest of creatures by any means, which is why two have come over. They reach out and they try to grab one of your arms each, uh, and they try to pull you in the room. However, um, you just instantaneously shrug off that uh, that attack. Neither of them gets a good enough grip on you where they can, they can move your bulk. Uh, you shrug them off quite easily, actually. So instead, um, they take a claw strike at you. 
Bastards. And, uh, so one hits an armor class of 20 and the other one is an 11. The 11 is definitely 20, 20 hit. Uh, no, 21. Yeah, I thought you, you'd have gone up. Yeah. Okay, so um, they both miss with their attacks as well. So that's there to go over. Um, the other two move down. That one will move down to there. And one is going to attempt to move past you. So I'll make that check. Uh, he does manage to move past. He doesn't try to grab you. He just tries to move past and will move up to you, Kingsman. Um, but can't make an attack this round. The uh, cultist. Do I get an attack of opportunity as it goes past? No, because uh, you're not a fighter, so uh, you don't have an attack of opportunity. It's, okay. Indeed, you would obviously because everybody gets yeah, some, yeah. but it's a it's a fighter, especially in in Pathfinder. Um, the cultist moves to here. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, Darred, Logan, and Kingsman, can you make me a uh, fortitude zone for this? Oh. 23. Okay. I'm going to use my hero point and reroll. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's 17. 19. Okay, so uh, Kingsman and uh, Logan, you both failed, and Darred, you passed. So, Darred, you recognise this spell. Um, it's the reverse version of your heal spell. It is harm. And the cultist uses the um, three-action version and does an emanation. And uh, you take five points of damage, Logan and Kingsman, because I rolled absolute crap with 2d8. <laughs> um, and Lo and Darid, you take uh, two points of damage from harm. Cool. And that's my go over. So, Kingsman, you're next. Um, the one that's immediately in front of me, I will do Scorching Blast. Um, as always, you see my hands get wrapped in flame and I can basically punch five bolts poof, 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 yeah. out of my hand. So just and remember can... this is not a cantrip. I was wrong when I said it was cantrip. It's a first level spell. It is a first level spell um, but it takes one uh, one action to do each blast. Yeah, so you can so roll I... three three attacks exactly. and each one does 2d8 damage. Correct. Uh, what is my... Do I get an attack? Okay, plus nine. Uh, Scorch your blast. Uh, that's an eighteen. An eighteen, that's and this is on the goal. Okay, eighteen uh, hits. Uh, I got a twelve, so I've got two eighteens and a, oh shit, yes, no, sorry, because it's no, it's fine because um, it's, the multi-attack penalty doesn't apply oh. until after you finish casting them. It's oh. a, that's a that's a rule that's written against that spell specifically. Normally, you might attack, but it would apply, but it doesn't because you're doing it as part of the same thing, I suppose. It's like a three action spell, effectively. So, okay. um, yeah, you get to roll with plus nine on every single attack. Okay, so I've got two 18s and a 12. A 12 misses. Okay. And the two so... 18s hit, so roll your 48 damage. Uh, it's 2d8. Yeah, but you hit um, twice, so it's 48. Okay, so it's uh, 40, oh, two sevens, that's 14. Uh, that's 18 in total. Eight, we should roll two twos on the last ones. Uh, I got a <laughs> four and a one. one. Four and yeah. one, okay. So it's, uh, so yeah, not 19, 18 points of damage. Okay, that is enough to do the ghouling. There's oh. one dead. Well okay, done. they are pretty weak. Ooh. That is one ghoul out of the way. Um, and that's your go over. So, Darred, you're up next. Thank you. Uh, okay, I I will cast my heal emanation. Yeah, I thought you might. Yep. Yeah. 
Everything is yep. nicely spaced. Um, it's 2d10 plus 8, isn't it? Two D ten plus your spell casting ability. Yeah. Uh, not my attack, isn't it? Well, no, it's, it's just the same, Fred. What's your what's your spell DC? Uh, DC spell DC is nineteen, and it's plus nine. Plus nine. Okay. Um, right. I rolled pretty poor on my saving phrase for the ghouls. Mm -hmm. Um, so the highest I got was a nine. So they all failed. They will take full damage. The cultist, I rolled a uh, 23. So he takes half damage. So it's 15. Uh, 24 points of healing to party members. Ooh. And 24 points of damage to all undead. Okay. So nice. the ghouls. If if that, if that is uh, so, I've, ro I've rolled fifteen plus nine, yeah. No, not plus nine. Plus your spell casting ability. So, what's your oh. wisdom modifier? Uh, will or no wisdom? What's your wisdom modifier? That would help if I could find that. Uh, if I what's, what's wisdom score? Ah, uh, there we go. Oh, sorry, plus three. So it is eighteen damage. Eighteen damage. Okay, so all three ghouls are dead. Nice. They oh. explode in yes. a wave of positive energy. Positivity. <laughs> nice. So well done. Happy. The cultist immediately becomes enraged <laughs> and Shit. cries out for assistance. Oh, no. oh boy. Um, I wish we'd... Just in case anything else I can't be seen, I have a 60 foot radius. Yeah, so that is. I, I know, yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah, just, just, just in case. I, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing that as we speak. Nice. Okay, so that is. So, you cast a spell. You finish cast a spell. The the um, the ghouls all explode in this in this wave of positive energy. They uh, just turn to ash immediately and, and then float away on the wind, a bit like the the end of um, uh, the last Indiana Jones movie three, mm -hmm. uh, where the guy takes the the drink from the the cup, the the wrong cup. Yep, you chose um, poorly. You, you chose poorly. You also hear a guttural, horrific shriek. It's a shriek of just intense anguish and pain coming uh -oh. from somewhere. I'm pissed someone off. Oh, maybe it's the librarian or the <laughs> main woman, whomever. It's also, boss, isn't it? Yeah. Also appearing from um, the bottom room where the reading area was. I can get this turned off. If we like mm. disturb the reading ghost, you've disturbed <laughs> it's ghost, the librarian from the ghost bus. Like, right? like, that's all, that's all I keep thinking about. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, let's see if I can copy this. There we go. Right. So, period. No. So appearing from uh, the reading room is another cultist. Okay, uh, but this shrieking pierce came from somewhere else. You can't see wh wh wherever that um, emanated from. Well done. So that's your go over, Logan. You're up next. Okay, so Ooh. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull my dagger and I'm gonna advance on the one I could see in the doorway through the door. Yeah, so that's the, the cultist there, yeah. Right. Go for it. And I'm going to go for a twin faint on him. Okay. Uh, 
I'm going to faint with the, the first one with the dagger so I can hit with the sword. Yeah, okay. Okay, so the dagger is... An... So you got to do a deception check. Okay, so... Ah. Well, that's not good. I got a seven for the deception. Okay, so uh, you make, you move to make this this faint maneuver, mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, it follows. It doesn't get distracted by by that uh, far-reaching um, stab. So it, you don't get the advantage on the on the follow-up attack. It it followed your your hand that you was really going to make the attack with. Okay. That's uh, that's a twenty. That is hit. it. Yeah, that's a hit. Roll your damage, please. Ten points. Nice. Okay. So you tried to faint, um, but you still hit anyway. So it's uh, it's okay. Okay. Um, that's a two action twin faint, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because the first swing it with the dagger, and then the second swing. With Okay, um, so that's your go over, and Lex. Cool. Your I've got. Last. Yep, I've got movement at thirty-five, so I'm going to position myself right there, and okay. I'm going to take out my Elven blade and carve into the canker sore For okay. ooh, beautiful. Uh, that hits for twenty-seven. Uh, that's and, a hit, but it's not a crit. I know, but at least it hits. And then we're going to, let's do some damage here. Oh wait, I do not have a sneak attack on that damage. Um, hits for eight. Eight points, yeah. Yeah, or not hits okay. for, I do eight damage, excuse me. Yeah. Okay. How's he yeah. looking? Uh, he's looking okay. Alrighty. Well, let's uh, let's do another hit for twenty-seven. Uh, that is a hit, uh, not a crit though. Brilliant, and we shave another eight points off of him. Okay, he's looking pretty low now. All right, and finally we go in. Oh, for a total of eighteen, probably does not make it. An eighteen misses. Yeah. So. Well, I take two good uh, stabs into his weird, gross body and maybe even slice off his fish necklace in the process. <laughs> you definitely <laughs> slice off his fish necklace, yeah. That's uh, that's gone. I don't even okay. want to take it as a trophy because that's gross. <laughs> <laughs> right, top of the round. And it's my go, but not the coldest's. Appearing from this door here, which is just next to you, Lex. Great. Passing through the door. Um, and actually, you're going to move behind the cultist. Is um, a ghostly female figure wearing um, librarian's clothes. No, it's a ghostly barmaid, obviously. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, I mean that's the artwork for a female ghost. But yes, it looks like a barmaid, and and zoomed out, it looks like she's holding mm -hmm. a pine. Um, but it is actually a, a, a just a female ghost. But she is a librarian. Um, you did guess correctly. This is a librarian from um, from Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, and she comes out of the room and man and, and appears in um, you know sort of almost solid. You can see through the base of her skirt. Um, and she just screams at the top of her lungs. I have told you, silence. And then um, she she breathes out this this wave of green gas. And can um, Lex, Logan, and Darred? Can you all make me? I think it's a fortitude saving throw. Yeah, fortitude saving throw, please. 28. Uh, 19. 
Uh, that's a fail, not a crit fail though, Ooh. which is good because crit fails are bad. Um, twenty-seven, sorry, twenty-seven. Twenty-seven is good. Okay, right. Ten, eleven. Lex, you take eighteen points of damage as oh, this poison shit. gas cloud just engulfs you. Wow! Um, so it's almost like the fog. You're just surrounded yeah. by this um, this green mist. Um, Darid and and Logan, you manage to turn away from the worst of it <clears throat> just in time, and uh, you only take uh, nine points of damage. Um, she does this, and then. Um, reaches down and and does some sort of um ghost type attack so she reaches into the cultist's body and you see her hand disappear into his back uh, i'm just gonna make sure right here uh, is she yes, attacking the cultist she's attacking the cultist yes oh because they're just making as much noise as you <laughs> so they're making more they're making more that's right they yeah. started the whole thing Mm-hmm. Um, so she reaches into its back and, and you see it writhe in pain as she obviously grabs some internal organ uh, and squeezes. And squeezes hard enough that it falls to the floor dead. I was going to say, yeah, but I'm not. Um, oh. So do we just have to be quiet and she goes away? Um, the other cultist moves up uh, from the south from the reading room and uh, you can see that the creature is very wary of this ghost woman that has just appeared Um, so it's not going to go any further than it is at the moment and it's going to um, take an attack at you Lex cool Lex is very quiet as she gets attacked. Has, uh, having so been in a library once. It's it's going to try to bite you. Uh, hitting armor class of 21. I am AC 21. Okay, so it just manages to, uh, to get through. Cool. Um, you are going to take 12 points of damage please and i'd like you to make me a fortitude saving throw oh god uh lex grimaces doing her best not to make a whole lot of noise and oh uh yeah my friends that's a natural one in only plus seven so an eight okay um you are paralyzed cool Shit. Can't make any noise now, anyways. No, you can't. <laughs> you are paralyzed. Uh, Kingsman, oh. you're up next. This sucks. Oh, shit. This sucks. The, 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 the poison air is gone. Yes. It's not there anymore. Um, and I don't want to attack the ghost. Um. Um, I'll tell you now that technically you have attacked the ghost because um, when Dara did the three action heal, she was within the area. Oh, the reason she's come out of the room is because you hit her with heal. Oops. Um. Okay. What? Uh, if you allow it, my movement is twenty. Yeah. According to I'm using Path Builder. Uh five, ten, fifteen. Can I get to there? Yeah, I'll allow that, yeah. Um and I will do the same thing as I did earlier. I will use Scorching Blast three times on the anchor. Yeah. So just remember that is that is your first level spell, so you are limited to how many times you can cast first level spells to three. Yeah. 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 This will be the second first level spell. Yeah. Um so I got a nat twenty, which is twenty nine in total to hit. Uh, okay, um, against cultist. Cultist, yeah. That's critical. Do you want me to roll the damage now? Uh, you can do, yeah. Uh, that's a fifteen. Fifteen. So that's you miss two d eight, um, and then you double score. 
Okay. So what did you roll on your D8s? Uh, 15. Right, so that's 30 points of damage because it's critical. Yeah. Okay. It's looking extremely injured. Oh, it's still standing? Well, I'll do it's it still again. standing, yeah. Okay. Uh, second blast. So I get no negatives on this. This is still plus nine because it's scorching yeah. blast. Uh, that's a 16 to hit. A 16 is a miss. Okay, and third. Oh, no, no, because I moved. So I only had the two actions. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's Right, it. so you got a crit on the first one. So yes. a crit with Scorching Blast on the first one means that you roll persistent damage, which I think is some D6s. So just check on yes. archives and if it's... Because I can't remember if it's one it, D6 persistent It says on a critical hit, the target takes one D6 persistent fire damage. Right, so at the end of this round, just remember to roll that persistent fire damage. Cool. At the end okay. of the round... At the end of the round, yeah. We are... Um, so, Kingsman, that's your go. Darred, you're up next. How is everyone looking? Not good for me. Just, just But I can't say so. I just look not no, good. No. Okay. Um, rinse and repeat, I'm afraid. I'm, I'm, it's probably going to be annoying, but... I'll three action heal again. You're, you're playing as Pathfinder Cleric. I'm used to it. <laughs> um, it is my last first level spell, though. Um, can I can I use my rank twos to cast them at all? Only if you've memorised it in that slot. It, I say it doesn't let me choose it. But just remember, they also harm the bad guys. Can I heighten them? You can heighten them. You have been heightening them because you've been doing 2D 10s. Even better so than that. Than, than, than the... uh, yeah, but you're... Okay, yeah. We can check it offline. They're automatically heightened anyway because you just get your... It's not your first level spells. You you get to cast five heals a day. Okay. That's your class. Right, separate okay, from so... your spells. Separate you get from three. Spells. You get three first level spells, and you get your your heals separately. So um, right, okay, yeah. I will cast. The this heal is again, your. Then. This is your third one of the five you get. This is my third one of my five. So this is fourteen, seventeen healing to everyone, yes. and seventeen damage to any undead within a sixty foot radius. And your spell DC is nineteen. Okay, so um, the the cultist is dead anyway because even half damage would kill it. Yes, well done. And uh, the fortitude save is not good enough for her, so she will take seventeen damage. But Lex, you get seventeen healing. Thank you uh, so much, Kingsman. If you're still down, me. I don't know if you've been injured at all, Logan. No, I'm good. You healed me up with your last one. And obviously healing myself as well. Okay. So um the cultist again dissipates in this in this wave of ash as the you rip through it with that positive uh emanation reaction here. Um the the ghost creature, the ghost woman on the other side of the corridor, is also hit by this with this wave of energy, and you see her sort of um glitch out you know as it passes through her. she's Get still alive soul. but she's looking quite ragged um so that's good you'll go over uh logan you're in next. okay uh i i turn to the to the librarian uh i'm i'm, I'm so sorry we disturbed you <laughs> Is there is there anything we can do to make it right? Like, if we just quietly go down this hallway. <laughs> are, are you moving into the room? Or are you saying this from where you are? No, I'm going to move. He's this. in the room, technically. As in, yeah. you're in the room, aren't you? You're, yeah. you're moving up that way. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you so you notice as you move away, she doesn't flinch. She's not. 
she's not sort of looking at you in any any way. She's focused entirely on Darid. With just sheer rage in her eyes. I don't have hmm. Hmm. I don't have anything that can affect her, so I, I'm very worried that I yeah, I'm in the same boat. I don't think I've got I just quietly move up ghosts. the hallway just pushing. <laughs> she she's paying no attention to you at all. So he's laser focused on Darren. Sorry, Darren. Good luck, man. <laughs> okay, so um, you can move. You can effectively do a three action move if you wish, <clears throat> and you can you know, obviously take in what is around the corner. I'm gonna um, move up. You do here. notice that all the while this has been going on, those those green ribbons have been flying north up this corridor. And oh. now you've rounded that corner, you see that they are going under the door in the right hand wall. Um, so this this one over here, okay. the green ribbons are passing into that into that area. Okay, well I'm gonna move up to just that corner and I'll stay there so that everybody can okay. see and I wanna see what the librarian's gonna do. The um the sign above the door here reads private scriptorium, restricted materials. Ooh, maybe his contract is there too. Okay, so that's your go over. Lex, you're um, paralyzed, um, but you do get to make me a repeat saving throw at the that's end of your turn. Fantastic. Well, since I can't do anything, I guess I will just make a saving throw. Fortitude, right? Fortitude, yes. 20. Bang on what you needed. <gasps> yes. So you are free from the paralysis. I. Um, this is good. But that's your yeah, turn. Yeah, that's over. my turn. Yep. Um, and Dave, around. you could roll your persistent fire damage for your crit, but the creature's already been turned. And I much. rolled a six. <laughs> but yeah, he's, he's gone. There's a small piece of cloth left behind that burns away to <laughs> nothing. I'm going to take that okay. to kill. Top of the round. Um, the ghost creature moves forwards directly to you um, and does this this same attack where she tries to pass her fist into your body oh. Um, oh, that's a 31 to hit <laughs> yeah, that is. so that's that's actually a critical isn't it because your armor class is 21 my armor class is 21 yeah oh my god so um, you feel this this First of all, this intense cold as the fist closes around your heart and then it squeezes and squeezes and you, you feel your heartbeat slow down and this, this wave of um, of darkness take over you as you, you feel yourself almost about to faint. Um, you take 40 points of damage. Whoa! Oh, oh, oh. And as she as she releases your heart just before you you fall into unconsciousness, because we're gonna assume that's not enough to put you to unconsciousness. No, I'm on yeah. twelve. Right. So just before you lose consciousness, she releases your heart and then follows up by passing her complete body into your form. Ouch. Please make me a will saving throw. Oh no. Oh, you're going to get possessed. I was just thinking that, yeah. Well, I've, I've rolled a 13. Will. Uh, 24. And if it fails, I will spend my hero point. <laughs> <laughs> you don't fail. Oh. You pass. You pass. You, you was close, but you did pass. So you feel uh, Jarrell for a moment your minds are linked and you see this this almost mouseish woman who who just loved books her sole existence was around the recovery repair and nurture of old tomes tomes she didn't care that she worked for somebody who was evil and um this bad reputation all she cared about was the work 
And when Belcora died and the rest of the script scriptorium staff fell to um, uh, cannibalism and um, just overtaken by, by the ghoul fever. She just locked herself away in her room, slowly succumbed to starvation and passed away. And her spirit here remained because all she ever wanted to do was to repair books and nurture um, her collection. And then as, as soon as you've made that connection, that passes and her form passes straight through you and uh, is now behind you. So her attempt at possessing your body has failed. And that is her go over. Kingsman, you're up next. Um, do we still want to attack her? I wonder if we can reason with her. We know an emotional hook now. Yeah. Darren, have you shared that information with us? I would, that, Technically, that would you're a, still in combat, so... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a flash of... It's, uh, I can't Micro quite pause to uh, tell you um, what's going on. I guess it's up to Darren, right? I guess... Well, it's not his turn. Um, I'm. I. Um, look. Um, change of plan. Logan has. Logan's gone up there to follow the ribbons. Maybe if we if we get the ribbons done, um, what the the other thing we need to do, and that might help us. But for right now, I think we leave her alone. And then I'll. What? <laughs> five, ten, fifteen, twenty. I'll hide no. up. I will I will run north up the corridor up the library yes. towards Logan bye <laughs> right someone's being left to die out maybe, okay. it's, maybe it's just the ribbons so so Kingsman has Go also on. taken off the north end uh, part of this corridor and Darren you are up next oh well I think is this dwarf just run peg it past me yeah yeah, yeah, he's, mm -hmm. he's, just, yeah. You All don't right. see him move I'm, that often, old and feeble as he normally is. But I'm, I'm uh, hoping and, and relying on the fact that he's merely moving himself to a more strategic place. I, I think, <laughs> I think normally when you're talking about wizards, the correct term is safe area. Um, probably outside the range of 20 feet that would say be good for a fireball. <laughs> Or he could yeah. be running away. I don't know. As she passed through me, I saw a glimpse of her, her alive. Her yeah, full existence. Yes. I can't really get away with casting Spirit Link, could I? What does Spirit Link do? It's form a spiritual link with another creature taking in its pain. And you Ooh. cast a spell. Mm -hmm. At the start of each of your turns, if the target is below its maximum hit points, it regains to hit points. But I didn't know if it would uh, oh. work on such a creature. I mean, uh, she's not bad. She's not evil. She just loved her job. But she is undead, so it's positive mm -hmm. versus negative energy. Yeah. So yeah. what heals you harms her. Sort of harms thing. her. So I'm just going to have to kick the shit out of her, aren't I? What, <laughs> what, I, what I will allow you to do is if you cast spirit link it will be a um a, i will get a save because she's not willing yeah uh, yeah not willing. willing but if you did cast spirit link and then healed yourself she would take that amount of damage <laughs> so if you did if you did spirit link so and then the single, single action heal uh, on your heal, self, yeah oh she God. would you you'd get healed she yep. would take damage all right okay i will cast spirit link <laughs> Are we the bad guys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm casting positivity. It's fine. I'm a goodie. <laughs> uh, right. So um, what's your spell, DC? 19. Okay. I failed. Right. Okay. So then obviously it's just a range of touch. So then it is 2d10. 2d10 healing on yourself for a single action heal. Plus three. 23. 
Come on, it's got to be in that 22 20. points of damage. <laughs> I would take a picture because it's 19. Fine. Okay, describe to me how you banish the spirit of Jarrell, yes. the librarian. And I forgot to put up the artwork, so I'll quickly do yeah, it. We've got the is, it is it banish yeah. or is it like send her to heaven? Let's send her. We'll, we'll say yeah. he's, he's gone to the great library the great. in the sky. sky. The great library, yeah, there you go. Um, feeling her pain and ever the wish to heal such hurts that I have, um, I reach out and I link with her spirit. So as it's more of a peaceful and guided transition to the afterlife as I burn the bitch out of this world. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, that would do it. Casting the, the healing magic on myself and infusing it, feeling it sort of reach along the spirit link and basically sort of dissolving her to the uh, veil beyond. And as you you complete that casting, you see uh, the the rage that was um, that was all over her features, and the rage, particularly, that was burning in her eyes, fade. And you see the face of this sort of um, fairly young woman. Um, as it fades out of existence, you hear on the wind just the words, "Ah, oh, I never knew it was so beautiful in the beyond." Ah, that's nice. Okay. That's sweet. You saved her. But I feel a bit better now. Um, and then I prepare to see all my um, compatriots behind her readying themselves with such tactical advantages that clearly they must be feet behind this image. I'm right behind you. I got you. I'm right there. Just, I couldn't <laughs> move for a while. That's, that's why we're, we're, we're there. We're just over here while we're there. That's, that's all. So, Lexi's now out. limbering up. And, I'll, uh, say, I'll, and I'll look out and I'll see these two. <laughs> so, are you still paralyzed, Lex? Or are you? No, no, I'm good. I'm just, you know, adjusting. Stretching. <laughs> yeah, that, that that wasn't fun. I will, That's uh, amazing. Well, I am so glad you both pulled through. Whew, I never doubted you for a minute. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Lex just kind of leans over to Dorit and uh, yeah, just. Say, I wasn't though. I I was gonna stay back here. Don't worry. I I got you. I'll uh, fist bump to Lex and just look yep. down the corridor at the other mm -hmm. two. <laughs> Lex just has like a dumb like smile on her face. Like, oh no, we gotta we gotta keep the party together somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be down again. Come on, look the ribbons. Hurry up! Right I'm through doodle. this door. All right. Tickety boo. Uh, let's go. If 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 Lex isn't stood up, I'll offer a hand to her and yeah. help her along. And okay, what, 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 we'll, what we'll also say you can do is you can search uh, through the rooms that are off of off of oh, this yeah. area, and uh, I will tell you what you can uh, you can have as treasure. <clears throat> there are also um, a lot of books here, and those yes. books are ancient times, and they will have value. So, Darren, being a uh, a lifelong uh, resident in Otari, there is actually a, an Otari bookstore, uh, and he's it's run by a fellow by the name of Morblin, and he deals entirely in ancient texts, scrolls, books. Um, so, you believe that he, if you were to take um, the books from not all of them, obviously, but some of the more interesting looking ones. Um, you believe you could sell these for, for quite a lot of cash. Ooh. I will inform the others of this and okay. the experience I had with the librarian so that we may treat this base with a modicum of respect. Yeah. Or it so was... you, can, you can spend some time um, doing that if you wish um, and then you can follow the ribbons through into the next chamber. So Maybe who's so. opening the door? Uh, Logan was here first. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, I'll check the door to see if it's... I'll move that. Yeah. I mean, they're using this as a library, so I can't imagine the doors are trapped. 
yeah, just dead things here to attack so, us. So I'm just going to check to see if it's locked. It's it's not locked. Oh, that's comforting. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, then I'm going to open it a crack and peek in. Okay. So you see that rows of bookshelves run the length of this room. However, in places they've been damaged or tipped over entirely. The books that once sat on those ruined shelves appear to have been relocated to other shelves. Several doors lead out from this room. However, the double doors which are located in the north of this room are the most impressive. They're made of stone and carved with a strange feminine shape rising from ghost lace mists of a cemetery of emptied graves. So I will uh, quickly remove the fog so you can see the shape of the room. So there is a there's door here in the south, door here in the south, the double doors over here to the north, um, another door here in the far east of the room. However, um, performing their uh, their duties as custodians and um, I guess janitors or uh, maintenance oh. people. There are four ghouls in this room and a cultist, and they appear to be making repairs to the broken shelving, and and again moving books from one location to the next. So we will finish there for this session. Uh, we will be back next time cool. to see what you do with these uh, ghouls and occultists now that you're down to just the single hill spell left in the arsenal, uh, which has been pretty clutch, mm -hmm. <laughs> actually, um, against the undead. You've made good use of that. Uh, but, yeah, one hill spell left and another fight, potentially. Yeah. So we cool. will finish. Well there. done. Right, thank you, everybody. Um, oh, bro. Yeah, that was a big fight. It, it, you did, you did is, well against that ghost. It is basically loads of undead, loads of ghouls and ghosts. Ghost, yes, ghosts and ghouls. Ghosts and ghouls. So the, um, the 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 glimpse that you got from Jarrell's sort of <laughs> imparting of a of a of a history. All of the ghouls and the cultists were the scriptorium workers. Um, and they isolated themselves down here when Bull Cora was killed and refused to leave. They continued to do their jobs. The only way they could stay alive was feasting upon the flesh of each other. Um, mm. And then that's how the ghoul fever started because mm. ghouls contract a fever. That's how be they become ghouls. And, um, and yeah, they, they all turned into undead. That's, that's how this level became what it is. And, of course, we all know someone who's bitten by a ghoul recently. Lex. Oh, oh, I got bit by. Oh, God. So, ghoul oh fever God. is a thing. I got bit by a ghoul. There it is. And oh, no. Why did this happen to me? <laughs> um, <laughs> get my cast cleanse affliction. <laughs> Not now, you can't, but maybe <laughs> next session. <laughs> so, so don't forget that Lex got bit. <laughs> I completely, I was like, no, yeah, I got attacked. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. So on the bite, they can do paralysis and you can contract mm. school fever. So gonna, yeah. Going to get hungry next session. Thing, you may well get hungry next session. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, right. We are finished for this evening. We'll be back. Uh, we might be back next week. We might be back in two weeks. We were going to have a discussion off air about when we'll be back because it'd be nice to have everyone back for, for the remainder of this level. Um, and, Meredith, you're away next week, I know. I am. I will be at the Great Granite State Comic Con up in a uh, state called New Hampshire. Cool. Very yeah. nice. Very Should nice. actually be cool, like like actually fall up there. Oh, that's yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just want to go to. I've been to Comic Con in a long time. I do miss it. I know. Well, next year. Well, it's London, it's London Comic Con in October, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, is that? Yeah, we have our, our London Comic Con at London. the Excel Center. Yeah. 
that's cool. Might not be going to that one, though. No. Boo. Hmm. Wait. Oh, well, we can discuss this offline and then share good news yeah. uh, yes. next time we're... <laughs> yes. Right, so I'm going to quickly foreshadow for the next session and then we will, we will wrap up. So our, our scene shifts above the Gunlight as we fly back across the fog fen to alight once more on the town of Otari. It's deep night time and all around not a creature stirs. It's a peaceful night. The waves lap it quietly against the docks and a slight breeze ruffles the sails of the moored fishing vessels. Our flight takes us further to the Dawnflower Library and its dimly lit and uninhabited halls. Though it's not quite so uninhabited as it seems as we notice a shadow flit and dart between the many shrines and stalls heading backwards towards the rear of the chamber to a locked area. A sign above the door reads, The Hall of Artifacts. Within a few seconds, the lock is overcome and the door swings quietly open. The shadow's focus and target is clear as it enters a room and moves towards a large glass container raised upon a dais. There's a sword stored within this glass container and it is prominent in the centre of the room. As our Earthswell thief approaches, our view shifts once again and we see that the sword is labelled the Cooperative Blade, Vol Rajani, the Rose Guard. With a sudden crash, the glass shatters and the shadow reaches in, grabbing the blade before taking off a full run from the room. And as our view fades, Dawnflower Library erupts in alarm. And we'll be back next time. Cool. <laughs>